Oh, welcome to another Land Rover video. I finally got around to doing another one. Today we're going to talk about the drivetrain, namely the centre differential and the role that plays in things. First we're going to get this out into the driveway. Now before you ask, yes I know it's leaking, no I'm going to do something about that later. In any case, I have a Lego demonstration for how the differentials are laid out. We might skip to that, and then we're going to hook this up on four axle stands and show you for real. Okay, for this part of the video, I've dug into my childhood Lego collection. And in here we have some differentials, and all the spider gears to go with it. We'll do a bit of assembly, and I'll show you what's going on. Okay. We have completed our uh, hodgepodge lego setup now let's uh, give you an idea of what's going on here this is a very very crude representation of the drivetrain in the four-wheel drive land rover we have a front differential here a rear differential here and we have a center differential now when you pull that knob out in the dash that locks this center differential let's explain why that's a problem so when you're driving and you turn a corner so normally you drive these would all turn as you turn one wheel is going to turn slower than the other. So as you go around, the wheels need to be able to do this at a different rate. And of course, if you know differentials, you'll see what's going on in here. You can see these gears are turning at a different rate. Now this is not necessarily necessary. This gear is just here because the Lego maths didn't work out. Normally, your engine would drive the whole shebang from this differential, from this bit here. The whole thing, as you can see, if I push that, it all rolls around. If you get the front end off, your front wheels start spinning, there's no power to your rear wheels, so that's a problem. If you lock this, you can end up having all your drive going to both front and rear wheels. The problem you've got is if you lift two adjacent wheels, which we'll show you that. Okay, so we get to the bit now where that little knob on the dash is. That knob operates an air actuator that locks this differential. Now, when you're off-road, that's perfectly fine. It basically takes this whole differential out of the equation and I'll show you what can happen when you're off-road and you don't have a center differential locked. Okay, so let's say you're trying to climb over an obstacle like this and you get one wheel off in the air. This wheel is going to spin because that center differential is engaged. That's a bit of a problem. You're going to need to lock that, otherwise all your power is going to go to this front wheel. Okay, so imagine um, you gunned it and your center diff exploded and fell over the ground and you got out with a jumper cable and a welding rod and uh, welded your shaft together. Now when I try and turn this, if this front wheel slips a little bit, you get a bit of spin, but for the most part you don't because you've got these two wheels on the ground and they're providing force to that. So you can successfully drive over this and you've got some force, but let's imagine you end up with a scenario like this. Now you're bellied out with two wheels in the air. Now you've got a problem because two wheels in the air spin around. Now this is where you would normally get a diff locker and put a diff lock in one or both of these. And that would basically mean there are no differentials anywhere. That's good off-road if you've got plenty of room for the wheels to slip. But if you're on the paved road, you're going to end up with problems. Okay, so this part of the scenario, we've got back out of the bush tracks. The weld job successfully got us out of the bog hole. Now we're back on the bitumen, we're going to drive home. Okay, it's all good and well when we're driving straight, everything works well. But as you start to turn around and your wheels start to turn at a different speed, things are binding up because you've got all this torque is going on in these wheels in different directions. And if I keep trying to do this, you'll hear it crack. And you can see the chassis twisting here. Eventually, you're going to snap one of these axles. Generally with these things, it's the front right hand half shaft. Uh, I believe, I'm not sure if I've been correctly informed about this, but the front right hand half shaft in some versions of Land Rovers are rumoured to have had a groove in them that works like a structural fuse. It means this will bust before the rest of the drivetrain does. And uh, I've done exactly that um, when I lost a bit of vacuum line pressure and my centre diff lock didn't disengage and I didn't bother checking the light. So uh, I drove on the bitumen road. I was alright till I got to a roundabout took the roundabout with a bit of load on and uh, bang, off went my front axle. So, if you don't have a front axle or you've got no drive on it, which would be a scenario like this, you can't get home anywhere if you've got no if you've got a center diff in here. So in that scenario where this wheel is buggered, 
lock your center diff and you'll have drive again. And that broken axle will actually alleviate the drivetrain wind up. But uh, in either case, that's just a quick overview. What we're going to do now, we're going to jack the whole vehicle up and we're going to demonstrate what it really looks like on the real thing. Super, super important thing, if you're ever going to do this, put it into gear, even if the handbrake's on. Why that's important, your handbrake drum is here, only on the rear shaft. So, if you jack things up, it can roll off the axle stands. And just to be sure, to be sure, wheel chocks. So we don't go too far. Scary when that happens. Okay, we're underneath at the moment. We can see our handbrake drum up there. The handbrake is currently on and our vehicle is in gear. So we see when we turn this wheel here, this wheel's gonna turn. It means the differential in there is doing its job. It's gonna turn the opposite direction. Now, if I try and jiggle this backwards and forwards, we see this trying to turn, but it can't because the handbrake's on. All right, so we're up the front. Same thing is gonna happen here when we move this wheel down. And of course, if we jut backwards and forwards, we see here, it's trying to turn into the transfer case and uh, it can't because it's in gear. Now, our center differential is in here. This is our handbrake drum. Okay, now we're not at risk of rolling away. I take the handbrake off and I can put it into neutral gear here. Put your car up like this is a good opportunity to give your wheels a wriggle. Also to check for embedded stones, but give your wheels a wriggle and check that the wheel bearings are okay. That one's a bit clunky. That one's probably due to get done. I have a spare set. This one's not too bad, it could be just kingpin. Okay, we've done a bit of work. We've got it up on the axle stands. We've got a uh, Tinker Man Mick here to help us out. We've got him around the corner for five minutes. Lucky to get his time. So the first thing we're gonna do is rotate opposite wheels to set, demonstrate what would happen if you get, in a normal situation, two wheels off the ground. Keep in mind the center diff lock is disengaged but it's in gear. So, all right, we've got two wheels spinning, all the power's going to the other ones. Try the same thing with the handbrake on. So I've obviously got traction problems. Now I'll get in and lock the center differential, which requires vacuum. Running. I've got the center dip lock disengaged, I'll put the handbrake on, while my power goes to the front. Yeah. I've got to engage the center dip lock, put it in here, and then start. And then I'll put the handbrake on, and it's going to load the engine up. And all four wheels will keep going. So hopefully you've learned a little bit about the four-wheel drive drivetrain. It's fairly simple, but it does the job. And yes, diff lockers probably wouldn't hurt. In either case, I probably could have done better with this video. Let me know what you think. Uh, it was a little bit rushed and my energy is a little bit low at the moment. Having multiple sclerosis does make practical videos like this just a little bit more difficult. In any case, let me know what you think. I'll see you in the next one. And uh, let me know if I helped you out with your knowledge base at all. Anyway, see you next time.